Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to be doing a species profile for you. We're going to be looking at the Bala Shark. Uh, we've showed off the 150 a few times and a lot of people have questions about that particular fish, so stay tuned. So here we're looking at our 150 gallon community tank. It measures 48 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and about 30 inches tall. Before we get into the ballast shark information, I did want to mention just from the start that these tinfoil barbs are also quite large. They're actually going to be moving to a larger tank as soon as we can find one for them. Uh, but back to the ballast shark, it's the fish that you see there. It's silver. It has got the black dorsal fin, the black tail fin at the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, they come from the Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, Borneo, uh, mostly inhabiting rivers and lakes in that area. Uh, in terms of their overall size, I've seen these fish as large as about a foot, so about 12 inches or so. The one that we're looking at here is probably about 8 or 9 inches in length, and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 or 9 years old. In fact, it was one of the first fish that we put in this tank. Uh, temperament. So the temperament, I would say this particular fish, the ones that we've had in the past, they are semi-aggressive. I've had these fish in with some cichlids, peacocks, and haps, and they more than held their own. Uh, they were never bullied by them. You can see here uh, that they are in. There's a frontosa. There's a geophagus cyrenomensis. That's the fish right in the center. We've got some clown loaches. We've got some severums. There's a blue acara in here, some garamis, of course, the tinfoil barbs, angelfish. I know. It's a strange mix of fish, but guess what? It's working out, and it's been working for years. A large Raphael cat there. And so you can see some examples of the tank mates. Uh, the ballast shark has a relatively small mouth, and so it, it doesn't, at least from our experience, it's not really keen on eating a lot of other types of fish. Uh, so, uh, again, being semi-aggressive, you know, you'd probably do well with some... Uh, less aggressive South American cichlids. Again, I've had them in with peacocks and haps. I'm not sure I would necessarily recommend that. It worked for us. It may not work for you. Uh, Garamis would certainly be uh, a suitable tank mate as well. So, you know, generally larger fish. Now, this is a fish that is going to like its swimming space. And you can see here, it's generally inhabiting mid to upper waters of the tank. So that area of the tank, it would be best if that was sort of left open for them to kind of swim around in. I don't find them to be as active as the tinfoil barbs we have here, but they still definitely like to move. Uh, the temperature, we keep these tanks, all of our tanks, in the upper 70s, so right around 78. Uh, the ballast shark will do fine in the mid-70s, up to about 80 or so. Uh, our pH is right around a 7.8, so it's on the higher side. It's We've never experienced any issues with any of the fish that we've kept at that pH. Uh, again, the ballast shark will probably go down to about a 6.5, up to around an 8 or so, and be just fine. Our water, our water hardness measures out about 200 uh, total dissolved solids. Again, that number does not give you the whole story, but it kind of gives you an idea of our water is relatively hard. The other thing that's really important with the ballast sharks is dissolved oxygen. You can see here we've got some sponge filters. We've got a hang on the back filter. If there's ever an issue with dissolved oxygen in your fish tank, a fish like a ballast shark or the tinfoil barbs that you see are going to be some of the first fish to show signs of stress due to low oxygen levels. So make sure you've got good water flow in your tank. These fish are really, really easy to feed, and I think that is certainly an advantage. Uh, we feed our fish in this tank uh, Tetra Flake foods, Hikari sinking and floating pellets, the Hikari food sticks. Uh, the Bella Sharks really love snails, and so as some of you know, if you've been following the channel, we have some snails in some of our tanks. I will scoop out a net sometimes full of ram's horn snails and dump them in here. And the ballast shark is one of many fish in this tank that like to snack on snails. Uh, they love frozen brine shrimp, frozen, frozen blood worms. So pretty much just about anything you put in that tank for food, it's probably going to eat. So it's a great fish. I mean, you can see the colors, uh, the temperament. Again, it's not too bad. It will, from time to time, chase some other fish around, but not really in a, in a dominant sort of way. The big thing with the ballast shark, in my opinion, is tank size. Again, this is a 150-gallon tank that you're looking at. It's crowded. Uh, like I said, the tinfoil barbs, we've got to find them a larger home. This ballast shark may end up finding a larger home as well. 
And I think the big problem with the ballast sharks is ideally you'd want to keep them in larger groups, you know, four or five, six of them in a tank. This 150 gallon simply will not support that kind of a group. Even if it were a, a six foot tank, I don't think I would probably put four or five of these in a six foot 125 or 150. Uh, I would say these fish would probably be better off in something like a 220 or larger. Uh, again, that goes against some of the common wisdom you'll see on the internet where they say, uh, you know, around 125 is a minimum tank size. I still think, you know, 180, 220 is probably a more realistic minimum tank size, just looking at our fish and its activity level. Uh, in terms of how you're going to aquascape the tank, you can see here, once again, we've got some uh, plastic plants, we've got some driftwood, but the big thing here is give the fish some space to swim. Uh, I, I haven't found them to be super, super active swimmers, but they're usually in motion most of the time. I'm not going to really address breeding here. Uh, they are egg scatterers. Uh, I have not bred them, and I'm sure there are other sources where you could go to to find more about their breeding behavior. Uh, so when we look at the positive aspects of the ballast shark, again, it's a cool-looking fish, uh, nice colors. Uh, it, it really it does have a nice personality. It's not overly aggressive. Uh, it, it's constantly in motion. It's a great fish if you want to have something that is in mid or top water. Uh, super easy to feed. Again, they just they eat just about everything. And if you got maybe a snail problem in one of your tanks, uh, definitely uh, they will snack on stale, snails. At least mine do. The the big challenges are going to be the size. I really 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 urge you to think about long term what you're going to do with this fish when it gets larger and so when it's eight inches or nine inches like this one is here or possibly a foot maybe even possibly a little bit lo longer where are you going to put that fish because a 125 is going to be awfully cramped uh, maybe even a 150 a six foot 150 is still going to be cramped uh, if you've got 180s 220s or larger it might be pretty decent, but again, you're going to have to have a larger tank. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is sometimes you'll see these fish, and if you've got multiple ballast sharks in a tank, they kind of do that almost like this sword fighting, like body slamming sort of thing that they do. There's some debate as to whether or not that is a breeding ritual. Uh, I have seen ballast sharks do this with no breeding behavior after that. It seemed to me to be more of a, uh, a, a dominance display than anything else. And then usually they do that. Uh, I often saw them doing that around water change time and feeding time, and then it would end, but no further behaviors after that. So again, great fish. You just have to have the space to house them. All right, everybody, so that was a ballast shark. It's an awesome fish. It looks cool. It's got a cool personality. Uh, it's easy to feed. But there are some serious considerations that you have to make before you purchase that fish. And I would encourage you to do a lot of homework and think real hard about whether or not that fish is going to fit into your long-term plans. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.